Hi, this is Adrian. Um, I'm here because I would like to talk out, um, talk through, and share an experience I had uh, recently um, that was sort of an outflow, a consequence of um, an experience I've been having for the last two years. Uh, it's basically about a relationship. Uh, the relationship that I've been in for about the last two years, which <coughs> I made the decision to end the relationship. Um, so, <coughs> in the last two years, you know, in forming this relationship, I've formed, um, you know, at attachments, um, habits, patterns, addictions, beliefs, um, emotional connections, dependencies, you know, a relationship is like an energetic feeding ground, you know, form of vampirism essentially. So, this has been a very uh, difficult experience in the last 24 hours because a lot of suppression has been coming out, a lot of self-suppression, because I started to see that I've been using this relationship as a way of suppressing myself because essentially that's what I'm doing when I'm doing this you know, what I call vampirism, where I'm seeking gratification and love and good feelings and, and all those things as <coughs> a form, you know, as an experience of energy um, through interacting with another. So what I experienced in the last 24 hours upon making the decision to stop that um, the person has actually left they've gone to stay somewhere else uh, and yeah a lot of suppression came out it was very emotional and after this person left and I came back <coughs> came back home and I was alone all of a sudden again after about two years of doing this um, it was like a part of me died because I suppose in a way it had uh, I literally formed a point or an entity within myself as this relationship as this connection and how I've defined and created myself within that you know, created the way I am and what I do, and how we interact, you know, all, all kinds of things that influence my life and my behavior and my expression. Again, rather, as a form of, su of suppression, of, you know, suppressing myself. It's also been, you know, I mentioned that it's been difficult because of all the emotional attachment, and that has made things very unclear. I mean, it might even be why things went on as long as they did. Especially in this instance, um, the person I was with comes from a background, a life. Um, basically of impoverishment and not having some of, you know, a lot of the same supports and, you know, just things that a lot, you know, that a lot of people like me have in their lives that, you know, we tend to take for granted. So from that, a lot of um, how can I 
answer. And there's a lot of guilt. <clears throat> because even when I would see that there's something not right here in this relationship, there's a there's something dishonest about it. I mean, that's been happening all throughout the relationship. I mean, even before the relationship, I saw to some degree that relationships in themselves are, you know, a form of self-deception and was quite weary of relationships. But um, as I put myself in this relationship, that, you know, things become very clouded when you become emotionally attached. And the sort of reasoning behind that emotional attachment was this background that this person came from. And the fact that this person does actually require and deserve a better support and a better life, that point in itself is true. But how I was using this point to maintain and justify the relationship was a point of self-deception. Taking what's real to, to justify that which isn't real. So I received some assistance um, last night on the point that provided some clarity and just sort of realized that I, I had to make a decision that was it was within the context of what's best for all. And again, I, I've slowly started to sort of see within this whole experience with this relationship with this girl that, you know, see firsthand that, that charity is a point of self-deception and self-delusion and is not a valid way of taking self-responsibility in this world because it's simply not being as effective as one possibly can. Um, you know, that I'm, that was shown to me last night was in my discussion was that I'm limiting myself at this point. It is a real self-deception because you are getting a sense of gratification and an almost, you know, because it's almost, it's immediate and it's much more tangible. But that gratification is such a self-deception because in doing that I'm in fact not living to my full potential in terms of being as effective as I possibly can and doing absolutely everything I can to sort out this world and support and stand up for life. So, given the connection, this was a difficult decision to make, but starting to realize that I, I have to make this decision because I, I have to be effective. I have to live to my full potential, allow myself to live to my full potential in order to be as effective as I possibly can to stand up for life. So, you know, that requires real specificity, it requires real self-honesty, and again, you, you can't allow the emotions to fuck with that self-honesty. You have to really stand and assess things clearly. You know, there's also even the, the point of fearing how this person would react and that they would not understand. But again, that's it's not a valid excuse. And it's, you know, 
I mean, that was the only the only point I could really try to convey to this person was, you know, th to have them not take it personally. Maybe I did this too much. Maybe I was just trying to. I wanted them to understand too much, but basically all I could say was my understanding, which is. You know, it's it's not about whether we're together or not. It is the starting point and why we're together. And is it self-honest? Are we, you know, <clears throat> does this relationship actually serve everybody equally and, and fit within the context of standing up for life in, in terms of doing what's best for all life? Or are we actually limiting ourselves by deluding ourselves with love and good feelings and happiness and all those things. So that was kind of the point of me that I realized I was, you know, killing, that I basically had pulled the trigger on. Because it's like that point realizing that it's no longer going to get its energy fix. It's that it that <coughs> it requires to exist. You have to feed a point energy for it to exist. And I mean, it was it was just it's all been really fascinating. It's happened so quickly, and in this short period of time, so much has opened up. You know, when I, when I came home, uh, like a kind of depression and sadness and like being like a sense of aloneness, you know, in terms of like a sad aloneness started to take over. And I mean, that in itself, it was like, <clears throat> it's fucked up. It's like, why, you know, why am I not okay alone? Is this my true actual state of being that I've been, you know, how long that I've been running from? How long have I been running from this? Is this relationship the only one that I'm using to escape this truth of myself with? Am I doing this with every single relationship I have in this world? It's fascinating. And it really opened up some bigger points because I realized that this point of like the perfect relationship and a happy, good, you know, positive, enjoyable relationship, I realized was one point that makes up my overall life design as an idea of of what I would want life to be as like the perfect ideal life and how I've created and limited and you know limited life to and reduced life to just this idea of the perfect life and this is like one of the main pillars of that life, um, you know, the, the perfect relationship, the perfect girlfriend, um, the perfect financial situation, you know, amount of money to have, the perfect uh, work, you know, successful career, and being like, a, I don't know, a respected, upstanding person within that. Um, the perfect home, the perfect person, the perfect Samaritan, or, you know, whatever. Just life is an idea of perfection. But obviously it's anything but that, because that's not life, it's just an idea. It's what I've used to substitute, substitute 
for life to not actually live and stand as life and express myself as who I am as life. I mean, it was amazing how consumed I was becoming with this point. Um, I started to see that, like, everything I was, you know, so many things I was doing was just for her, I mean, in terms of that relationship point, and again, this overall perfect life point, you know, they're all kind of intermeshed. You know, um, things like the home I was living in, you know, I've got this nice big home, and I, I came home and I was alone in this home, and it was just, you know, it, it, all these things just started hitting me, it was like, why do I even have this home, I don't even, I don't even want this, I don't even need it, like, all alone in this big empty home, you know, um, all the shit I was buying, you know, having like a, a, the perfect home full of stuff, you know, use, you know, things I can use that are, you know, or, or nice things, uh, forms of entertainment, um, beautiful things, um, uh, my my drive to get these things has suddenly like disappeared and evaporated. It's like am I was I doing all this for her? I mean really literally I would just sometimes I would just want to go out and, and buy things and just accumulate stuff. It shows the extent of how far you can go with these points and into these points, like right into fine detail, into every little thing you do to try and fill that void y you leave when you abandon yourself by not standing up for and as yourself and living yourself. And suddenly there was also like a sense of freedom from all those things, from this idea, because, you know, it was the same thing with work. Um, I was terrified to lose my work or have a problem at work or, or change jobs because then I wouldn't be able to uh, stay in this country and stay with this girl. Um, you know, and also obviously where I was living, what country I was living, I mean, so many points of limitation that were just controlling me and allowing my fear, you know, this fear of loss to control me, using the reasoning and justification of, you know, I, I need to help this person and this poor person, they, you know, they, they need my support, they deserve a better life. Obviously, I can't <coughs> live life for another person. It, it really has to start with me. So. <coughs> so I suppose that's all I have to share for now. Um, you know, this is a this is a point that I'm still working on, and I'll really have to apply myself on um, and keep applying myself continuously because, again, like it, it just opened up so many other points. I I really I did a lot of writing today and tonight because there's just so much shit now. And 
now that this self-imposed limitation has been removed, or I've at least begun to remove it, I can actually, you know, free myself to assess what is actually best for self as all is one is equal as what's best for all life. Alright, that's all I'm going to share for now. Thanks.